we live in a world dominated by a monetary system that not very, very many of us understand very much about. In fact, you don't even ask the question about it. You can get a PhD in economics and never study the monetary system, sort of like being a doctor and never understanding nutrition. How did our medium of exchange come under monopolistic control of central banks? I'm not gonna answer that in six minutes. But hopefully the question will get planted in our minds and we can open them to other possibilities and ways to create systems of exchange. This is a coin that was minted in the temple of a goddess 400 years BC, Juno Monita, hence mint and money. She carries a balance as a symbol of fairness and a cornucopia as a symbol of abundance. And these coins were used to symbolize human exchange. Mercy, truly understood, is actually a two-way exchange, giving and receiving, and it's the same root as merchant and commerce. We don't have to go backwards to reinvent monetary systems based in human exchange. This exchange is a far cry from that, and it's forcing corporations to grow baby growth which means they are buying and selling our natural world and bringing us to the brink of environmental problems. Uh, is uh, anybody in control here? It seems that it controls us. Uncle Sam apparently is broke and cutting our programs for health and education while selling public assets. Wealth is increasingly concentrated in the hands of a few. Our middle class is disappearing and millions of people have lost their homes and their jobs. Some people blame government spending. Some blame corporate greed. We all see that Congress is stuck and our elections are being bought. We know that the federal and federal reserve is not really federal. But what we're not looking at is the actual nature of our monetary system. It is a monopoly. It is created by central banks rooted in debt and driven by interest. Thus, by the very structure and nature of the money system, debt increases and wealth is extracted upward. We all know that a monoculture isn't healthy. And uh, in nature, it, it leads to uh, systems of extreme fragility. We know that diversity is needed in business and in nature, but we can create monetary diversity, monetary ecologies. We realize that God didn't create money, but we kind of act as if it is created by God. And all of these currencies with different colors and faces are the same monetary structure around the world, rooted in debt, driven by interest. So what would a monetary ecology look like? Two civilizations have them. Dynastic Egypt for many, many, for many, many hundred years, and medieval Europe for several hundred years had monetary ecologies, times of tremendous flourishing, widespread prosperity. Cathedrals were built, and they were both civilizations honoring the feminine. Now in six minutes, I couldn't describe one system well for you, but to sow our imaginations, monetary systems can be created by governments at all levels, they can be created by nonprofits, and they can be created by businesses. I have a list of resources for you afterwards. They can range from the size of a neighborhood, to a city, to a region, to a country, even to the globe. They are created by people in context. Wow, I have a minute of space. <laughs> They tend to be electronic systems that can be accessed online or with mobile phones. And because they're very transparent, they build trust. And with trust, currencies can do what they're actually intended to do, which is to flow. These are three possible systems created by nonprofits. The Natural Savings invests in natural systems like trees wellness tokens incentivize healthy behavior. And in Lithuania, 
a, lear a foundation is creating a learning currency so that Lithuania can be a destination as a learning country. In Brazil and Uruguay, there is a, a credit clearing system, a credit network, where businesses can offer credit to each other. Small and medium-sized businesses create 75 to 85% of our jobs, and they have the hardest time gaining access to, to capital. A government-initiated government system, a city system, could generate a huge labor force so a city could realize its dreams of being the cleanest city or the healthiest city or a cultural mecca without adding taxes. I'm going to talk to Helene about this one. Uh -huh. So we have a choice. We can continue in a competitive system based in scarcity, or we can learn to generate an ecology of currency. And the good news is these currencies are, are springing up all over the planet, along with value. I learned that Juno Monita is also known as Juno Lucina, universal light. And I wanted to end with this line from a prayer to her that I found. Awaken us to our true nature and responsibility to create fairness and abundance. And this is my thanks to Bernard Leotard, who's my friend, colleague, and mentor. He's devoted his life to the monetary system and to creating currencies that can generate a world that works for everyone. Thank you so much for being here tonight.